faith means belief in something without evidence. Because if you believe something without evidence, then that justifies anything. You, you're no longer vulnerable to somebody coming back at you and saying, hang on a minute, let me argue the case. If you believe it without evidence, which is what faith is, then you don't argue the case. You say, no, I'm not arguing that case. This is my faith. It's mine. It's private. I don't, dis I don't dissent from it. I don't retreat from it. You're just going to have to accept it. Now, that is evil. Many atheists allege that having faith is the absence of having evidence. When Christians claim they have faith in something, they are really saying they don't have evidence, so they need to fill in their lack of evidence with faith. The reality is this is nothing more than a misrepresentation of what faith actually is for most Christians and how faith is defined in the New Testament. So let's begin by looking at what the New Testament actually says. The Greek word for faith is pistis, which is used to mean loyalty or assurance in something. In fact, we never see the word necessarily used to mean a substitute for evidence or believing in something without evidence. It is more or less very similar to the idea of being loyal or having trust in something or someone. It is not denoted to mean that which is used as the means to form trust in something or someone. A good example can be seen in Acts 17.31. He has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance, piston, to all by raising him from the dead. Notice pistis is the assurance we have in the future promises, which results from the evidence of the resurrection. Faith is in the absence of evidence, it is what results from evidence. Because God has given evidence through his resurrection, we can therefore have faith or assurance in the future promises he has given. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your pistis, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise in glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As you can see, here the word pistis is defined as loyalty to God. The words faith, belief, and trust are all similar to one another. I have faith in my bank, or I could say I trust them not to steal all my money because I have good evidence to have this faith. I have faith or trust that when I walk down the street, most people will not stab me because there are good reasons to think most people in society are not psychotic or at least fear the repercussions of the law. Faith is not the absence of evidence, it is the result of evidence. We have faith in something, like our bank or society, because we have good reasons to place our faith in these things. Likewise, Christians place their faith in Jesus when we argue God has given us good reasons to trust Him or be loyal to Him. If you read through the New Testament, especially in Acts, no one gives their personal feelings or personal faith as a reason to believe in Jesus. The reality is, they appeal to the evidence so people will place their faith in Christ. In Acts 2, Peter appeals to the miracle of tongues before them, the miracles Christ performed, the evidence of the resurrection, prophecies concerning him, and the witnesses available to speak with. Paul in Athens also appeals to evidence for the resurrection, namely the witnesses to this event. In Matthew 9, 6, Jesus heals a paralyzed man so that they will have evidence or know he is the Son of Man. In John 14, Jesus tells the disciples to believe or have faith in him on the works they have seen him do. Even in Exodus 9.14, God told Pharaoh through Moses that the plagues will be given so that they may know there is no one like the Lord. The Bible constantly affirms for Christians to believe because of evidence, not through blind faith. Faith is the result of evidence. It is loyalty or trust in God because he has given us evidence or revealed himself in some way. With this in mind, it helps us better understand several passages in the New Testament. Note the people who came to Jesus to ask for healing, and he said they were healed because of their faith. If we understand that pistis really means loyalty or trust in Jesus, then there is really no issue. 
Jesus told the Roman centurion that he had greater faith than anyone in Israel. The centurion trusted that Jesus could simply heal by speaking a word. But he trusted that Jesus could do this because he had heard of or seen prior evidence of Jesus' miracles. His faith or trust in Jesus was not blind, but built on evidence. The woman with the issue of blood believed Jesus could heal her because she had heard of his power. Both of these cases and many others show people who came to Jesus had great faith because they had good reasons or evidence to place their loyalty or trust in Jesus. It was never a blind belief. It was faith because of prior evidence. Jesus replied constantly, their loyalty or trust in him has made them whole. Believing in Jesus as Lord and healer is what was really important. Even Christians who are not into apologetics do not typically have faith on a lack of evidence. They typically cite some personal religious experience they had where they felt the presence of God. So they are admitting they place their faith in Jesus when they received evidence or a reason to do so. For them subjectively, it is not a blind belief. It is a belief backed by evidence that can only be known on a personal level. One could say they have no evidence to support their experience, which might be true, but what these Christians are actually saying is they have a personal experience they rely on to give their faith or loyalty to Jesus. So faith is not the absence of evidence. It is the effect one has when they are given evidence to place their faith or trust in something or someone. Redefining faith as a lack of evidence is a dishonest tactic and a straw man argument. Now some bring up places like Mark 6, where it says Jesus could not do mighty works because of their lack of faith or unbelief. But this was not understood as if Jesus needed them to believe in him, or else he was limited in power in some way, like modern heretics like to claim. Jesus could not heal anyone in this area because they did not trust him to do so. They were not willing to be loyal to his lordship and rejected his offer to be healed. This was understood through the ancient custom of the client patronage system. The people in this town rejected Jesus as their patron, and a rejected patron would not force his gifts upon clients who did not trust him or did not want his gifts. So he simply left and moved on. There is no indication in light of the cultural context that Jesus needed blind faith from people to heal them. No one there wanted Jesus' lordship or patronage, so they rejected his gift of healing. Now some object that Paul says for people to walk by faith and not by sight. So surely having faith must mean to deny evidence you can empirically see and study. Well, this would be quote mining what Paul is actually saying. The full context shows Paul is talking about the hope of being with Christ one day, not denying evidence that may contradict our beliefs. We have faith that we will one day be with Christ, despite how things might appear presently. This relates to what Paul says in Acts 17.31, that we have faith in his future promises because of the evidence we have been given. Think of it like this. Imagine you are married to someone in the CIA, and they contact you to tell you that they are still alive, but the news is going to report that they died for a secret mission. So you have been given the evidence or the assurance they are alive. Yet the news stories seem convincing. They even show what appears to be a very real dead body of your spouse. So do you walk by faith in your spouse or by what you see on the news? In other words, do you walk by faith or sight? Let's say you're at a bar and a friend says that while you were in the bathroom, the guy you were talking with put something in your drink. But you take a look at your drink and it looks fine. The guy you were chatting with appears nice and friendly. But you know your friend would never lie to you about something like this. Do you go about the rest of your night walking by faith in your friend or by what you see? In other words, do you walk by faith or sight? As you can see, walking by faith is not the absence of evidence. It is a belief backed by evidence that is enough to outweigh contradictory evidence that we might encounter. So when Paul says to walk by faith and not by sight, he is not saying to deny evidence we see, but that we have enough evidence to trust in Christ's resurrection and promises, despite the way the current world looks filled with sin and decay. What about doubting Thomas? In John 20, Thomas doubts that Jesus rose from the dead, but then Jesus appears before Thomas to prove that he did in fact rise and says to him, 
Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So is Jesus teaching it is better just to have faith and not demand evidence? Well again, the context can easily address this. Thomas was never asked to believe without evidence. He was stubborn in the face of sufficient evidence. Thomas had the evidence of the empty tomb and numerous close friends telling him the exact same story. Thomas doubted in spite of evidence. So Jesus is not actually saying believe on no evidence. He taught to believe on the sufficient evidence he already provided. So Thomas had enough evidence and still rejected the truth. So he was not as blessed as those who believe without being forced to accept the resurrection. A similar idea can be seen in Hebrews 11, which is often taken out of context. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So surely faith must mean a lack of evidence. Well, the immediate context and the surrounding context should be enough to debunk this misunderstanding. This verse contains parallelism. Things not seen is meant to parallel things hoped for. So it should be clear that faith in this verse means trust in God that he will fulfill his promises. Look at the examples that follow, which are meant to clarify the previous statement. All of the people listed were given evidence to trust in God and the promises he made for them and their offspring. In other words, they were given evidence to place their faith or loyalty in God for things hoped for and thereby do the things he commanded. Verse 19 even directly says Abraham had faith in or trusted God because he used his reason to realize God could bring Isaac back to life and fulfill his promise to Abraham that the promise would come through the line of Isaac. The context shows faith is not a lack of evidence, it is being loyal to God or having the assurance in things hoped for. Finally, skeptics bring up Proverbs 3, 5-6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. The same idea from Hebrews is here as well. When it says trust in the Lord, and not your own understanding, it should be understood in the context of He will make straight your path. The author is obviously talking about trusting God to guide us along our future path. If we are tempted to sin, we should still trust God's commandment not to sin, even though in the present it might seem like the best option for us to escape a bad situation, like in the movie Flight. Denzel Washington's character only had to lie to avoid going to jail and lose his pilot's license. But in the end, he rejected the easy way out and told the truth about his addiction and went to jail. But that enabled him to get over his addiction and gain a relationship with his son. The verse in Proverbs is teaching the same idea. Do the good which God commands, even if it seems easier to lie, because ultimately, doing the good will lead to a better outcome, even if we cannot see it through our own present understanding. Plus, there are a wealth of other verses where believers are encouraged to be knowledgeable and not ignorantly follow along on blind faith. Acts 17.11 says the Jews in Bera were more noble because when they received the word, they examined the scriptures to make sure everything Paul said was true. They were noble because they fact-checked Paul and did not believe on blind faith. Matthew 6 also contains a good example. To know if God will provide for us, Jesus says to use your reason. Consider the birds of the air or the lilies of the field. If they are cared for and if we are more loved by God, then logically it follows that God will also provide for us. In other words, don't just trust God on blind faith, but reason from what we see in the natural world to arrive at a sound conclusion. So given the full context of the Bible and the context of the verse itself, there is no reason this verse, like other passages, are encouraging blind faith. So once we understand what faith means from a biblical understanding, we can see there is no reason to think Christians are encouraged to believe without evidence or remain ignorant. Through various examples given in this video, claiming faith is a lack of evidence is to define faith in a dishonest way that is inconsistent with what we actually mean when we say we have faith in our friend, or in our bank, or even in our God. There is no reason Christian faith means a lack of evidence. It is loyalty 
or assurance in God because we have good evidence.